Okay, so despite uh, the riots and protests and violence and, and everything that went on here um, over the weekend, um, the market shrugged a lot of it off today and, and just maintained the bullishness they had uh, going into uh, this weekend and not, didn't necessarily uh, extend, um, but just maintained and did so with a little you know, light volume, some weakness um, in leadership and, and rotation into um, the value. So we're going to talk about you know, what that means and, and you know, whether or not it, it, it uh, changes how bullish uh, the trend is. Um, and, 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 and how it impacts not just long-term, but also even just short-term expectations. Uh, we're going to talk about how to trade uh, the long-term trend with any kind of short-term uh, question marks uh, with our trade idea of the day. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Today is Monday, June the 1st, 2020. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the market forecast indicator. Another small little update today, very small range, um, 30, half the normal, half the average range uh, at 30 points. Uh, the near term line uh, made a run back up uh, to the upside, though it's still kind of hovering around the 80th percentile. The momentum line did not drop to an extreme low this go around, so that's different. The last three dips have all dipped below uh, the, th the fifth percentile to extreme lows. The one before that got below the 10th percentile. Uh, the one before that got below the fi fifth. So you can see, you know, this, this hasn't been a, like every drop uh, on the momentum line have been, have all occurred uh, on pretty significant down, relatively significant down days uh, where most of the selling occurred during the day um, and then closed at the low of the day, at the end of the day. So, um, you can see that um, you know that's that that's been a negative sign uh, here in the recent past, but we didn't get that this go around. So you know, and, and the, to kind of hover around the midpoint means that we just grind higher, and that's that can be very typical too. Um, we're not getting the moves to the upside because we're not getting upside moves during the day. They're mostly occurring. Um, they're mostly occurring in uh, the middle, right? In the in the overnight session, excuse me. So. But other than that, you know, strong bullish posture, market sentiments rising above 50. You see that also on the on the uh, Nasdaq composite, especially. You notice that here. There we go. The Nasdaq 100. You see, its near term line did get back, so it's very strongly bull. Remains very strongly bullish. Um, might not have been the leader today, but it's still a leading uh, area in the market. So, you know, well through that 78% Fibonacci retracement. You know, now we have to move this line up because again. Uh, we're going to be watching for any signs of a retracement, uh, and you don't get a retracement until you break the the 23% level. So keep that in mind. Like, we can get a move down to this 23% retracement level, and and produce light pink shading in the yellow line, right? It doesn't have to be like this, or close to a yellow line there at least. It doesn't have to be a like you know before you'd have to break you know some pretty decent levels to get to the 23% and you'd actually still be above the green line. Now you're going to be below the green line. So this that's that's just something to kind of keep an eye on in terms of it's just representative that we're slowing down that we're that um, we're a lot closer to the 30% line. If you look at the S&P 500 for an example, and I know we haven't we haven't uh, reversed this yet. We haven't broken above the 78 on the S&P uh, like we did on the Nasdaq, but if I were to draw like for for right now um, if this ends up being the peak, you can see for the same thing for us now, now that we are, you know, that this 30 day moving average has been moving up so fast and we've been slowing down relatively speaking. Now we are again, 23% retracement would be a light pink shading and yellow line. And, uh, that can be pretty bullish, uh, if that happens and that wouldn't be a retracement, right? You need to break below that to start a retracement that would bring the intermediate line potentially down to the 50th percentile and get dark pink shading where we get something like this where we have a new low point that can start a new intermediate run but again you know the the at least the market sentiment line market sentiment lines above 60 on the nasdaq 100 so again like it's between 50 and 60 means you're not bearish anymore but you're also still kind of stuck in neutral um, you're not really bullish either. Now we're above 60. Now we are moving, right? We are going to get this kind of 
well, we can always get a false peak, but the likelihood of getting a false peak are, are a lot lower. There's a good chance this we can just really get going here to the upside. We don't see that quite yet on the other. So Dow hasn't crossed above 50 yet. The Russell 2000 is not even not even above 40 yet. So it's actually still in bearish uh, territory. So and and we're still below the 62% retracement. So that kind of shows again, you know, how strong everything else has been. You know, the Russell, which is actually a lot more representative of the broader economy than say the Nasdaq 100 or even the S&P 500 are. Um, the Russell is just lagging. It's lagging behind and. Um, that's okay, right? It's you know if we know what's the leadership, we can trade the trend with the leadership, and that's what we're doing. Um, but we also just need to be aware of a risk factor, right? This is a risk factor, and we account for risk factors that pop up like this, this lagging behavior, um, you know, with with better risk management, right? Just making sure that we're not too overloaded uh, to one side. In this case, the bullish side of the market, in case that that risk factor plays plays out. All right, before we look at some other charts, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mouse over this button right here. Click the red subscribe button that pops out. Uh, there's also a subscribe button down below uh, the video if you're watching us on YouTube. That will notify you when these videos are posted. Also, while you're down there, click the thumbs up icon. That tells me two things. Number one, you liked your video today. It's obvious. Number two, that you want me to do or you want us to do another video tomorrow. It's a quick way to give us feedback. If you like our videos, let us know with one click. You can do that right now. If you don't like our videos, you don't have to click on anything. Uh, also down there, comment. What questions or comments do you have about anything we talk about in the video? I'd love to uh, keep the conversation going down in the comment section below. Uh, join our website at marketscholars.com. There's a link popping out right there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link to subscribe to our site for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos from day to day. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. All right, if you're watching our um, our video on our website here, check out the Market Outlook live uh, trade review video that we do. When I do the Market Outlooks uh, every day at 3.30 um, that I do those videos, I also do a Market Outlook live video. So at 3.30 Eastern time, right before the market closes, we review all the old Market Outlook trade ideas that, that I've done in all my other videos um, that we still have going because we, we will open and we will close them uh, at some point in time. So we talk about those trades there. And then we also put on today's trade idea before the market closes uh, at 3.30 Eastern time. So check that out. Also, uh, here's our class schedule. We just posted our June class schedule uh, so you can get more information on that. Our monthly subscribers, uh, this link right here takes you to our monthly subscription plan. They get access to those vid to all of our trading rooms as well as our Market Outlook live videos. Our premium subscribers get you know access to tools and other things as well. Our charts, our tools, all of our custom content. Uh, Q&A sessions, um, and you can get at, uh, information on that in our, on this link. Um, but the, our monthly subscribers get access to all of that. Uh, we also invite you to, sit, to engage with us on social media. Click this heart. It opens up this window. You can like uh, today's Market Outlook tweet. Click that uh, thumbs up. It takes you to your Facebook page. You can like today's Market Outlook Facebook post. Again, that benefits us because the more likes these have, the more Twitter and Facebook will promote our content to all of our followers. Uh, it benefits you because Twitter and Facebook will promote content in your timeline from the, from the accounts that you engage with the most. So we try to make it uh, really easy for you to engage with us here. All right, now let's take a look at the uh, long-term crossover signal, and you can see so we got a bullish candle again so far one day in, uh, which is great. You know we have a we don't have a higher high yet. That's something to watch for. We haven't closed above last week's high yet. That's really bullish. We don't have that, but we do have a higher close, uh, and we do we don't have a lower shadow. And and if we do get a lower shadow, we're going to be breaking that 62% retracement level. So that's something to keep an eye on in terms of whether or not. If that happens this week, kind of like what we talked about last week in last Friday's video, if we break down below this 200-day moving average just like that this week, then we're going to have a transition candle here, and that that wouldn't necessarily be the greatest sign up. That's the lower probability scenario. The higher probability scenario is that this that we continue to trend according to uh, what we're seeing here on this chart. Uh, you can see the Russell 2000 is not quite to its 200-day moving average, uh, and it's slowing down considerably here so far, at least. Uh, so you can see why you know it's it's hard to be too uh, strongly bullish quite yet when we're not getting that uh, broad participation. On the other hand, the Nasdaq Composite is multiple weeks into a golden cross environment and is you know just really continuing a strong bullish trend with strong positive momentum that we haven't had since the end of last year. So it's almost like this little selling never even occurred uh, on the Nasdaq 100. So it kind of shows you the the bipolarity of the market here. You look at the three green arrow chart, 
uh, for the S&P 500. We're back to three green arrows, and we continue to ride along on uh, this, this eight-day moving average. We're just trending up really nicely. The MACD is above its moving, its moving average is rising still. The stochastics moving average is, is, in the, is, is in the upper reversal zone, which can, when it gets there, can stay there for a while, and we just get small moves to the upside. So nice, nice strong trends developing um, on the S&P. Even on um, the Russell 2000, you're above the eight-day moving average, and, and the MACD, its MACD's moving average is still rising too, and, and its, its um, moving, stochastics moving average just got into the upper reversal zone. Yeah, there's a bearish drop there, but you know, that's not, you know, not until you break below 80 does that become more of a significant issue. As you look at some of these other oscillators uh, for the SPX, we're, we're maintaining this breakout above 60 and 100 uh, on the RSI and the CCI. Uh, the DMI may, continues to look strong. We're above 30. We're not quite, quite back below 20 yet, but at least we're above 30 there and some room for that to run. Uh, you look at its Bollinger Bands for SPY, we're still in the, you know, above the 75th percentile of the bandwidth. We're above the point of control now. We're holding that breakout. Uh, so very good sign from that perspective. And then finally, from the Ichimoku trend, you know, we're above 5, we're above 80 on the daily chart. And now we're just starting a week here. Um, but if you notice on the weekly chart, um, you know, it started, you know, now we've, we've finally gone from this bearish trend up to this bullish. Something to keep an eye on um, is this idea, and this is, we can just close this real quick, but we're just, we're just got above the cloud on a weekly basis, um, and you can see how tenuous it is. So we'd like to continue to hold that uh, to the upside. Um, that's why we're still noisy on the weekly chart. I and mean, again, this, this rally, as bullish as this rally been, put that in contrast to the selling that occurred before that, and you can see why we're really not bullish, right? We're not, not that strongly bullish on a long-term level yet. Contrast that with the NASDAQ uh, composite, and you see its uh, noise balance here is above 80, and we're back to almost being above 5, and look how high up above. So you can see the difference here between how strong the trend is on the NASDAQ, how tenuous it is, on um, the S&P 500 and how still strongly bearish, not as strong, but moderately strongly bearish we are uh, bearish uh, on this because we're not even through the cloud yet uh, at all and we still have negative signs. So that again just shows where the leadership is and where we can want to continue the leadership to be uh, for this market if we're going to maintain because once that correction, once that those performances correct, um, then then they're more often than not when these big divergences in performance correct they both go down it's just the cues will go down more because they have more to lose uh, and that's that's the case in any kind of environment whenever you get big divergences in performances uh, usually they you know when when they're supposed to kind of go up together and maybe a little outperformance here or a little underperformance there but when there's a big kind of a bubble and outperformance then usually that recovers with both lagging and the, the big winners losing more because they have more to lose. What's interesting about today is, is today we just, we had a, you know, we, we, we got into Thursday's high point. We didn't get to a new high, but we're strongly bullish. But look at the volume uh, on today's move. Very, very light volume. 56 million shares trading hands today very small range below half only three points i mean 56 million shares that's the lowest we've had during this whole decline and you know rally you can see over here right before uh, we started we, right before the the sell-off began we were at 48 million we had 57 there 64 54 so so we are you know this as low as that is that's where we were uh, at the end of that bullish move and and the average volume itself uh, was right around six in the low 60s. Right now, the average volume is, you know, 98. So big difference. It's one thing to have 56 million shares and the average is 62. Uh, it's another to have 56 million shares when the average is 96. Uh, very, very small amount of volume. Uh, when we put that into perspective, 56 million shares is way down here. Way down here. That's how far below the average we are. Uh, and the 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 move, the average range here three points way down here less than half um, so there's a good chance if we can maintain this it'll be a slow grind higher um, but we'll be able to break this two percent mark eventually break the one percent mark and away we go uh, volatility 
um, would suggest that maybe that's not quite going to happen <laughs> yet, at least, right? Because you notice volatility didn't drop. It's still as as bearish as we were, as small, or excuse me, as 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 small range and volume as we were today, um, and as you know, and we ended up higher. Volatility didn't go down. In fact, volatility remains elevated, really elevated. Like again, go back to that same period right before you know, right when we had. Um, you know, 50, 50 some odd million, the average was around 60 million. Um, but you can see volatility had jumped up already, had pulled down to the 90% level by then, but we were in the 15s. Now we're at 28 and we're still hovering right around this 90% mark. So it shows just how more tenuous the market is. Um, and you know, that, that, that we, you know, to expect the possibility of, especially with the ranges for volatility dropping, as much as we are as they are if I go to this chart and pull up the volatility index here you can see the range for the volatility index is dropping a lot pretty low in fact you know pr sharp uh, to the lowest level during this whole decline that's how uh, that's how much it has um, that's how much it has dropped uh, in this uh, during this that's how much it's compressed excuse me the volatility is compressed and the more it compresses the more likely you are to get, I mean, it doesn't have to be a big shoot up to the moon, but even just a move like this that we had uh, going close into um, um, May options expiration. And you can see there we were in the high 20s, and two days later we closed at 35, and we had hit a high of 40. So that's, that's how quick and, you know, how big and how quick a volatility jump can occur when we've had such a significant compression here. And if I show you again, if I were to change this um, ETR to the last three days, so a really small time frame here, uh, again, you can see how much we've compressed down just three points um, after we've really compressed all this time and we're at this low level, you know, again, suggesting the possibility that we can bounce up here. <laughs> there it is on, the, on this level, the ATR to price level. There we go, down to this 10% mark again. No, that's about where we were, and we had a jump. We had a big drop in volatility there that ro that rose us up. Um, but you can see how the volatilities got bigger after compressing. We had to jump up, jump, you know, big move lower, you know, to a stage lower. You know, the question now is, you know, if we come off this low, are we going to get get another stage lower? Uh, kind of like that. That would be, you know, we'd be breaking that 90% mark. Be very bullish if we were to get that breakdown uh, to the downside um, on volatility. And it doesn't have to be as big because remember this is relative to the current um, the, to the current ATR. The ATR is a lot smaller than it was back here when we made that stage lower. So um, and we were at 40 here, and now we're at 28. So it doesn't have to be that big for us to get a you know a pretty significant breakdown. All right. So to summarize our technical outlook before we look at some other things here, um, we this these bullish kind of breakout signs are still holding. That's a very good sign for the S and P. It's just got a lot of catching up to do than the NASDAQ and the Russell even got a lot more catching up to do. So uh, if that's going to be the case, if, if the NASDAQ is going to continue to be our leadership and it's pulling everything else up with it, then we need to maintain, you know, where the leaders are and, and the days, uh, the multiple days where they're not the leadership, then we need to look at that as a sign of uh, any kind of impending near term weakness and nothing more than that, at least. Uh, at least what we've seen lately and we talked about how much the Nasdaq can be weak and still not even retrace not even be a retracement move just be a noisy move uh, with how strongly bullish it is now not just on the daily chart but even on this weekly chart so very very good moves um, it's just a matter of okay how bullish you know do we want to be in our portfolios to match uh, what we're seeing across these different index, the varying degrees of bullishness across these different indexes, all the way down to the, the Russell, which is still kind of holding below its resistance levels. So, uh, and that just kind of reflects, okay, you know, depending upon whether you're in your long-term uh, section of your portfolio or the short-term section of your portfolio, um, you know, most of us are pretty bullish in your long term. It's, it's just a matter of how bullish, considering how much we dropped in your long term portfolios, you can afford to be really bullish there. Um, but then in your short term and your active trading and how you manage that alongside your more passive uh, 
uh, portion of your portfolio. That's where it's like, okay, maybe you know we can still be pretty bullish, but not all the way. Not we're not just getting all these confirming signs from a Dow theory perspective on all these other indexes. Uh, so we can still be leaning that way, especially in that tech-heavy area, um, but not quite too overtly overly bullish yet until we see some of these other indexes uh, play catch up again. So what do you think? Do you agree with that? Disagree? Comment down in the comment section below either way and let me know what you're thinking as to why. Um, especially if you disagree. Why, what are you seeing from an economic indicator or technical indicator standpoint that would suggest either that you're a lot more bullish than we are here or a lot more bearish than we are and share, uh, share those charts uh, or whatever you're seeing uh, with our market uh, outlook, our market scholars community below. All right, now let's take a look at what's uh, going on here with um, and what's driving the price action here today. You can see um, during this, real, I mean, not even since March, since the beginning of March, right? Since the beginning of March through the down, through the, the rest of the down period and then back up, it's still a pretty risk off move. S&P is just barely catching up. IWM still hasn't, uh, it's lagging behind. And of course, commodities are still down. So, but if you just take a look at, you know, for example, what happened here today on today, kind of a relatively quiet, uh, quiet day today. Here we go. And we'll go to like a 10 minute chart. Um, you can see it was a very international uh, U.S. stocks really lagged behind. The dollar was down um, uh, and international stocks really rallied up to the upside. Small cap stocks had a really decent gain and gave back some of those gains by the end of the day. So they still finished uh, pretty strongly above where the S&P did, but uh, you can see the weakness when, even with commodities rallying here by the end of the day, they really pulled off. And whereas the rest of um, these international areas held up. Interestingly enough, when you look at it over here, the VIX still had the highest percentage move out of all these asset classes. Uh, international stocks up there as well, um, all outpacing. There's your small caps and how it uh, about three times the, the gain as you had against. The Q's value and growth kind of matched each other. Growth a little bit uh, more of a gain there. Uh, on the downside, you can see that you had um, bonds. Um, bonds were down. The dollar was down. Um, uh, uh, high investment grade bonds are down. The whole bond basket here that we track uh, was down. So you know a pretty pretty down day of such so a you know a risk on type move. And there's you know, as we saw, the, the, the returns for bonds, even uh, if I were to go back a little bit further, you know, even just to like a one-year chart over the past year, as, as bullish as stocks have been, 11% gains, uh, small cap stocks haven't been bullish over the past year. And you can see bonds are still very overbought. So a one-year return of 23%, you know, there's still room for that to come down uh, here. Let's take a look at the chart uh, for uh, t the 10-year yield. Um, it's still grinding, very small move, but you see that, that very negative PPO is starting to work its way uh, to the upside. Boy, if it can get above that 50-day moving average, that would be the most ideal scenario here. Uh, still really kind of flirting with that. And TLT, same thing. It, it has broken below its 50-day moving average. Uh, and a little bit of a down move today. You'll see if it can break through. Now, it has broken through the 23% retracement. This is on a uh, regular... Uh, this is off of this real strong move that we had since since October uh, 18 level, where bonds just really took off to the upside. Well, now we are, you know, retracing bonds. You know, they've been holding up at that 23% level on a long-term basis. Now, not so much. Now it is in a retracement mode. It's today's breakdown. It's a very, very good sign uh, for risk appetite as a whole. Gold, on the other hand, you can see has not really started to retrace yet, um, and it's not anywhere close to that. But uh, there's a reason for that one. And if I were to start here uh, where this move started, where this bullish move started all the way up to uh, where it's ending here, and you can see where it's 38% retracement is going to be, or 23% retracement is going to be before the retracement in gold actually starts. We can drop down to 152 on GLD and still be, be noisy, right? And shoot, by the time we get there, the 200-day moving average uh, might be up. Whereas over here, um, you can see we the 200-day moving average is not even close to the 23%. So bonds really had it, you know, really took off there. Uh, but the issue with gold and what would keep it up is what's going on with the dollar. Um, look at that big drop. So we had this this, this drop below the 200-day moving average last week. So far, holding that drop this week, 
very significant bearish move. If, you know, again, we've talked about the significance of a bearish uh, trend in the dollar and how bullish that would be for risk appetite. And, uh, and we haven't had that, right? We've, you know, we followed up declines with moves back to the upside. It might take a few weeks or one big week, but we followed up drops with big moves right back up. So it's only one day in this week, so we need to see how, you know, how it's going to perform by the end of the week. But so far, a good sign that, that it is holding, that this drop on the dollar is holding. And as I said before, that's a very, very good sign uh, for risk appetite as, and as, a, as a whole, in general, across all the different asset classes, including, uh, for example, uh, crude oil, which has been trying to work its way back from the extremely low levels back to just even, you know, I mean, remember, we're, this is still pretty bearish levels compared to where we were at the beginning of the year when we were in the 50s and last year in the 50s up to the low 60s. So, you know, we're still 50% of that. It's got, it's got a long ways to go, but at least it's not so extreme uh, to the downside. And, and uh, that's, you know, another reflection of this kind of risk appetite. And you also have this aspect of that, um, of that gap in volume. Uh, that that it can get through once it gets through this level here it can start filling in that gap and really make a run to the upside and that would also be confirming of a broad bullish move in risk and risk as a whole so you can see the kind of like we talked about before I mean we are we are we got a lot of bullish signs um, we're not quite like you know let's you know let's we're this we're, we're so bullish that we'll never go down again that type of bullish uh, move in risk appetite but um, but we're definitely not bearish, and, and we definitely are leaning a lot more to the bullish side. We just need some, some areas in the markets here to kind of catch up uh, to where, for that, for, for pretty much where the cues have been leading us. Uh, once that starts to happen more and more, then, um, then we'll be on this nice bullish market sentiment run that usually when that orange line in the market forecast crosses up above 50, you know, you can expect a six to nine month run to come out of it. All right, now let's take a look at how the sectors uh, have been performing. And let's, again, just take a look at here just today uh, to see what kind of move it's made. And you notice, again, real estate had a big run. Energy had a big run. Utilities actually had a big run here early. Financials started out strong. Uh, your three kind of horsemen, the three horsemen of the, of the uh uh, the QQQ apocalypse, um, technology uh, way down here at the bottom, to, um, consumer discretionary outpacing, uh, and and um, and XLC. Now keep in mind about the consumer discretionary. If you take a look at the biggest winners today, Gap, uh, Norwegian, uh, Coles, Marriott, Royal Caribbean, uh, Carnival, Harley Davidson. Um, these are all some of the stocks that were the most beaten up. You also have some financials in here too, and we looked at the financial sector on Friday's video. We have a few technologies, uh, um, Autodesk, a trade that we've uh, done before uh, in previous uh, market outlook video that we're still uh, writing, um, but you, you know, and some energy stocks in here. So you can see it's one of those days where it was kind of like you know the the laggards that took off, um, and you know again that's. That's usually when the leaders start to lag, that usually means that there's weakness ahead. At least, again, just short term, uh, not necessarily anything long term, um, but, but it's, not a, it's not the best sign to see what was a leadership uh, in the market lie, especially where you can see healthcare uh, here. If you take a look at the flip side of this, this is again the S&P 500, there's your healthcare stocks. Uh, Gilead Sciences, Pfizer are really struggling, but look at Micron, Cisco, um, um, you know some of these in, some of these bigger inve oh, Intel down here, C Seagate, some of these big Qualcomm, Oracle, um, all lagging uh, behind to the upside alongside AbV, Regeneron, Humana, lots of health big time healthcare names. So previous leaders lagging, uh, previous trash uh, still gaining. In fact, I tweeted that out here, or retweeted Mike Santoli, who mentioned um, that today's gainers, see if I can find it here, there we go. Today's gainers in the S&P, the biggest winners at the time that he posted this, these are how far off of the 52-week highs they are. So only Chipotle was the only one that was actually relatively close to its 52-week high. Everything else was all, you know, 30, 30 plus percent off, 30 to 50 percent off. So it's one of those days uh, in the market today. 
it is good to see, um, despite the you know the difference there. It's, st it's still good to see some dark green shading and green lines all across the board, and intermediate lines all above 90, all up here in these discretionary areas. We did XLC did give us a cluster, an overbought cluster here, a little bit longer into the run than 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 um, we're not so new anymore. Um, but even these financials, industrials, you know, they don't have as strong an intermediate lines, but they're still showing bullish patterns. There's materials and energy, which are also both above 90. Um, the weaker uh, areas are your, um, are your uh, safe haven areas, which is what you'd expect them to be. You'd expect them to be weaker. In fact, staples and utilities aren't even showing green lines yet. They're still showing yellow lines. So that's very typical of a, of a bullish setup where, um, you know, safe havens are bullish, but there's lagging and your cyclicals are very strongly bullish. And one day doesn't make a trend, so one day of underperformance doesn't mean, okay, we're going to drop tomorrow. Um, but if we get another couple of days and the Russell makes, continues to make this kind of big catch-up move up and through at 62% Fibonacci retracement like we've seen previously, then we start saying, okay, there might be a few days of weakness coming up. Um, you know, as these as the leaders make their way back down towards support levels. So, from a trading perspective, you need to have a um, strategies that, like a bull put spread, where you can trade something that's strongly bullish and give it room to pull back if there is any weakness. Something like Palo Alto Networks here, you can see strong bullish posture, well above its 30-day moving average. In fact, if you know, it's actually well above its um, eight day, eight and 17 day moving average. You know, it had pulled back to its eight day moving average and got two red arrows and now is bouncing back off of that. Um, so a very strong move uh, for Palo Alto. You can see it's got, um, a str it's got a golden cross over today or this week, excuse me, uh, on its 50 day moving average crossing up above its 200 day moving average. So strong. Uh, posture there. Its DMI is strongly bullish with its positive index turning back up above 30. Its negative index well below 20. Um, its ADX is above 40. So we need to keep an eye on any kind of late move that might push this uh, this up towards 40, something like this, and then kind of end the run at that point. So we're going to keep our eyes on that. Uh, if you take a look at its uh, RSI and its CCI, uh, you can see uh, that they're both at strong levels, well above 60, well above, you know, well above zero in the upper half of the chart, you know, trading around the 100% level, which is good, or 100 level, which is good for that. You take a look at its Bollinger Bands and, and where it's trading there, you can see you're above the, the point of control, you're flirting with the top of the value area, uh, so very good sign. Uh, from that perspective, from an Ichimoku cloud, you have a strong bullish trend, uh, it's very, very strong bullish trend, well above 10 actually on the trend quality and easily above 80 or above 90, well above. So strong trend and room for it to pull back and still be and still be bullish, right? And that's kind of why you say, okay, from a option strategy, doing a directional trade on this where it's already made such a strong move, you know, especially from 125 all the way up to almost 250, so almost 100% gain. You know, it's kind of hard to say, okay, now let's buy a call option. Um, but in terms of like a strong trend and how hard it would be for it to reverse um, without slowing down a little bit, then that's where strategies like the bull put spreads uh, can come in. So what we did um, today, uh, like I said, we do this in our Market Outlook Live is we came down here and let me pull this up so we can actually see it. There we go. So you can see, you know, you've got, you can move all the way down to 230 and still be bullish and still make your maximum gain. And we're trying to make, um, here, let me get rid of, I think I still have, yep, I've doubled up on it. So for a three quarters of a normal position of what we do in our classes, you know, you can make a well over 30% return uh, on this risk, 275 bucks, 230 um, would be for a $10 wide spread. Uh, that this one is $230 is your 10% or 30% return on risk. So we're above 30% return on risk. Good opportunity for uh, for it to make uh, to make the move that we want it to. And if you put this on its chart, and here let's go to the Bollinger Bands here. And let's do this again. Let's put that. Um, here, go back to Pan W and put this onto its chart. Uh, so that low point over here that we're bouncing off of is where we need it to stay above. And there's a pretty decent volume node that can help it stay above. 
that as we continue to work our way up potentially above its value area and into uh, this path of least resistance mode. All right, so that does it for us today. You've heard from me now. Now I want to hear from you. Use that link to go to our Market Outlook forums at, on our website at marketscholars.com and open up any new thread or apply to anybody else's threads with any questions or comments you have uh, about what we talked about in the video today or anything we didn't talk about. And let's keep this conversation going. As always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment on our video down below. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos and uh, join our, our Facebook group. Uh, as well as our community at marketscholars.com. Have a great rest of your Monday night, everybody, and we'll see you all next time.